Dear friends, today we reflect on an important lesson that Jesus taught through the parable of the wheat and the tares. It serves as a powerful reminder of the need to be vigilant over our lives as believers. We are like a field where the good seed of God's word has been sown. However, we are warned that the enemy comes, often in secret, to sow tares, corruption, lies, and distractions among the wheat. In this message, we will uncover the ways the enemy seeks to corrupt what has been sown in our hearts and how we must remain watchful, sober, and steadfast in our faith. Be a watchman over your life. Guard against spiritual corruption. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Matthew 13 verse 24 to 25 The field represents our house and the good seed is the word of God. But notice how the enemy waits for the right moment to sow tares. He does it while men slept. The enemy's tactic is subtle. He waits for moments when we are unguarded, when we are not vigilant. He doesn't come with bold announcements, but instead sows confusion, half-truths, and distractions. These tears, though small at first, begin to grow alongside the good seed, and if we are not careful, can choke out the wheat. The world around us is full of these tears false teachings, the lure of worldly success, and the temptation to live for the moment rather than for eternity. The enemy uses these to corrupt the good seed in our lives. In Genesis, we see the same strategy when Satan subtly asks Eve, Did God really say? Genesis 3 verse 1 He used half-truths to plant doubt and disobedience in her heart. The tears that the enemy sows are often disguised as harmless, even beneficial. Today, the enemy uses the allure of success, fame, and power. Society tells us that we only live once and must enjoy life to the fullest without any concern for eternity. But as believers, we understand that life is not just about here and now. We live in light of eternity. Life is not short but eternal and every decision we make affects not just our present but our future in God's kingdom. The tears may come through the music we listen to, the shows we watch, the conversations we entertain, or even the posts we consume on social media. They subtly shape our thinking, leading us to accept things that contradict the truth of God's word. This generation is more connected than ever, but in that connection lies danger. If we are not vigilant, the enemy will find ways to sow his tears through the screens we watch and the influences we follow. The good news, however, is that the seed of God's word is incorruptible. 1 Peter 1 verse 23 reminds us, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. While the enemy may attempt to corrupt our hearts, the word of God planted within us has the power to remain pure. But this is only true if we are vigilant to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4 verse 23 warns us, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. If we allow greed, anger, and other sinful desires to take root, they can render the word of God ineffective in our lives. We must stay rooted in the truth, 
nurturing God's seed to produce the fruit of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Just as a gardener tends his field, we must constantly nurture the word sown in us by spending time in prayer, meditation, and study of the scriptures. Only then can we resist the thirst that the enemy seeks to plant. Jesus goes on to describe how the thirst and wheat are allowed to grow together for a time. When the servants notice the thirst, they ask the master, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have thirst? The master responded, An enemy has done this. Matthew 13, verse 27 to 28. In today's world, we find many false teachers, false prophets, and those who distort the word of God. These false teachings may sound appealing and may even appear harmless at first, but they are terrors that, if not discerned, will lead to confusion and deception. But notice how Jesus instructs his servants. Let both grow together until the harvest. Matthew 13 verse 30 It is not our job to approve the tares. If we focus too much on attacking the false teachers or those who bring deception, we risk doing more harm than good. Instead, our focus should be on preaching the incorruptible word of God, living by it, and encouraging others to do the same. God's judgment will come in its own time. At the final harvest, he will separate the wheat from the tares, and the tares will be cast into the fire. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil works about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We cannot afford to fall asleep spiritually. While we may not always be able to prevent the enemy from sowing tears, we can guard our hearts by standing firm in the truth and resisting the devil. James 4 verse 7 says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Our strength to resist comes from our relationship with Christ. Through Christ, we have come to trust in God. We have placed our faith and hope in Him because He raised Christ from the dead and gave Him great glory. 1 Peter 1 verse 21 As we close today's message, let us remember that we are called to be watchmen over our lives. The enemy is subtle and he will seek to corrupt the good seed that God has planted in our hearts. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can discern the tears and resist the corruption that comes through worldly influences. Let us guard our hearts diligently, nurture the word of God within us, and remain steadfast in faith. While we wait for the harvest, may we be found as faithful wheat, bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you for your incorruptible word. Help us to be watchful over our lives, to guard our hearts from the tears that the enemy tries to sow. Keep us grounded in your truth and give us discernment to recognize false teachings and worldly distractions. May we remain steadfast in faith trusting in your perfect judgment and living our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.